What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. And today I am in North Carolina. A few weeks ago, got a chance to go to the Kef Music Lounge in New Jersey. Well, now I have, or I'm in North Carolina for more of a home version of that with Adam from Kef. So Adam, how are you doing today? I'm fantastic. It's great to have you. Thank you uh, for coming, to, coming up. Coming up. Yeah, thanks for, yeah, <laughs> thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Um, like I said, I really enjoyed Kef's theater and they invited me to this mini home theater um, where he has a lot of the same products, but mm -hmm. we want to talk about it here. So Adam, first of all, what inspired you to do this theater? Well, I've been in the industry since 2004 mm -hmm. and uh, in the home theater, home audio industry. Mm -hmm. And I, I always wanted to kind of create something that would be unique, something for myself, something for my family to share. Uh, but you know, finding the right time, finding the right place, finding the right company, all that kind of stuff just took years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Planning for this really probably started back in the late 2010s. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Kind of just always, you know, oh, hey, I love this product, I love this, or I definitely want to use this one day or something like that. And uh -huh. so, uh, and then when um, I, I travel primarily for CAF covering a lot of the East Coast and things, but it, uh, I kind of took advantage of when we all slowed down a bit uh, to, to use this time to work on the house and, and go ahead and build build the theater I've always wanted to. We, mm -hmm. uh, we luckily have a basement in this house, so I had kind of this, this room that's 12 and a half feet wide by 25 feet deep to be able to make a, th a theater room out of. So everything was kind of primed and ready. Mm -hmm. uh, stopped traveling for a little bit there, so that kind of gave me the opportunity to do that. And then of course, working at KEF, having a lot of great partners in the industry from uh, from KEF, from Acuras at the Audio Labs, to Hagel for amplification, to Epson for, for projectors, and Snap One for a lot of the uh, networking cables and wires and things like that. So mm -hmm. it just kind of this great partnership kind of just happened to be, and uh, everyone was willing to kind of chip in and kind of make this really amazing project come to, come to life. Yeah, so this is a great COVID project, right? Everybody kind of had their project that they worked <laughs> yep. on. Mm -hmm. And um, I have to say, the Kef Music Lounge is great, but there's a mm -hmm. trick up its sleeve in this theater back here yep. that I really want to show you. So if you were at all interested in a home theater tour, definitely make sure you watch through this entire yeah. video because <laughs> there's something here that you don't normally see in a home theater. So we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. But first of all, we have this screen back here. Can you tell us a little bit about this screen? That we yeah, have? this is actually a really cool script uh, that was created by Great Dane Cinema where uh, if you're using a Kaleidoscape media player, a bunch of different uh, streaming me media players or a Plex TV, uh, it can actually pull what content you're playing in your theater and give you a digital uh, movie poster. So whatever's playing, so it's now playing start time, end time, surround formats, ratings, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and it's really great. It's actually a free script. Uh, you, mm -hmm. I, you could donate a few bucks to the guys over there so they can kind of keep it updated. But I was able to make this a, a little do, digital movie poster. It also actually is the computer monitor for the computer that I have where I can do a lot of programming and, and just different changes and things like that within the theater mm -hmm. or, or for the whole house. Okay, so here we are in the main brains of the whole operation right here. This is his rack. This is just outside the theater and it is beautiful. Again, it reminds me of the music lounge with all the nice blue lights oh, and yeah. the big <laughs> rack here. So what do we have here? So up top, I've got all the different networking uh, that actually runs the entire house, uh, all of our automation systems, not just the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got an NVR for cameras that we've got throughout the house. Mm -hmm. I've got our Control 4 processor. Uh, we're using Control 4 throughout the whole house. That, mm -hmm. uh, that handles our automation, lighting, programming. Uh, handles our security as well as music distribution mm -hmm. um, and uh, video distribution as uh, uh, video distribution as well with controlling TVs and things throughout the house. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a 16 channel amplifier here that handles all the distributed audio throughout the house. I've got eight zones of audio uh, spread throughout the whole house, master bathroom, kitchen, dining room, living room, and then two zones outside as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a uh, HDMI matrix here. This allows me to take four different inputs and uh, spit them out to four different uh, video screens. I've got the uh, Acuras Muse surround processor. That's from a company called Indie Audio Labs. Mm -hmm. They're actually here in the US. Uh, this is an amazing 16 channel surround processor only in three rack space. So it's a really small, I'm sorry, two rack spaces, two rack space processor mm -hmm. and uh, 16 channels. So it's able to do the full theater and then a, a few extra additional things. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a custom built uh, movie server here. This has got just under a thousand movies on it uh, with uh, three, 
18 or something terabyte hard drives. I can't honestly remember. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, Blu-ray yep, or 4K volume yep, drive. So I, I own all of my movies, but then I'm able to have them uh, have them backed up so I can actually stream them easily within the theater. Mm -hmm. uh, but even then, it's still a lot of what we do, thanks to Disney Plus and stuff nowadays, is, is, is streaming, I yes, will admit. Yes. Uh, a little storage drawer, and then I get into the amplification for the theater. So I've got two of the KEF CASA 500s. These are our DSP subwoofer amplifiers. Each of these powers two of uh, two in-wall subs. I've got two subwoofers in the front in-wall and two subwoofers in the rear in-wall, okay. and they're uh, each indiv individually controllable. Uh, this is a really awesome piece from a company called Surgex. Uh, this is actually made just down the road mm -hmm. uh, over in Garner here okay. in town. Okay. And Surgex provides uh, equipment that does really good, uh, really amazing surge protecting as well as battery backup. Okay. And what this piece does, it allows me to turn my amplifiers on in procession. Mm -hmm. So I'm not turning, you know, uh, what, 12 amp channels on all at once, mm -hmm. draining too much power from the, the 20 amp circuits I've got. Okay, and so I you also, are running a 20 amp circuit yep, Yeah, I've got two, two dedicated 20 amp circuits to power the whole theater. Okay. And I also, from SurgeX, have a really nice uh, 2000 OL, it's a UPS online battery backup. Mm -hmm. That actually sits behind the rack because it does make some noise, but that's actually giving battery backup to all of the video products in the house as well as all the networking computer products to make sure any brownouts and stuff like that don't cause any problem or when the power goes out for that, you know, for that one 10 second glitch and it, everything would shut down otherwise. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I've got power for the theater room. So I've got two of the Hegel C55s that provides 10 channels of amplification. Mm -hmm. I think those are right around 300 watts, 250 to 300 watts per channel. Okay. And then I've got the big Hegel uh, two channel amplifier that's actually powering the left and rights on the bottom. So those are all class AB amplifiers. Nice, nice. And that makes up our 44 space middle and rack. So okay. it's pretty much cr uh, crammed to the gills here. And I also, I forgot, I have an Nvidia Shield, Apple TV, and a, a HD home run uh, digital movie, uh, a digital um, TV tuner. Uh, we don't have cable TV here. <laughs> Neither do I, right? Because uh, <laughs> uh, there's, there's so much, there's so many yep. sources. Oh yeah, there. I mean that's to say between the between the movie library I have here and all the streaming content, we've got content for days. Yeah, literally years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's super cool. And I mean, I like this rack. It looks really cool, cool and clean right here in the room. And I know behind this is a closet, so it's easy to get to, and you mm -hmm. can kind of do everything that you want to do with this rack. I love the fact that you got the drive here just in case you need it, but you got yep. oh, yeah. the, the, yep. the hard drives there so you can just stream it right off of there. And you said you're running Plex, so you're, you're happy yep. with Plex? And yeah, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, the, my, my dream product is actually really still is Kaleidoscape. Mm -hmm. uh, they're Strato C players and things, but just basically on, on some budget constraints and things, I've been a long time Plex user and mm -hmm. I already had a large library before that. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of kind of made sense to just go and continue to use that. You basically designed and built this yourself. I did, yep. So, so uh, I've worked in the industry since 2004. That's when I got my start actually in retail. Circuit City alumni here. Yeah, nice. Um, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but since then, I've kind of moved through different positions in the industry. I, I worked uh, at a distributor selling you know, audio video gear to resellers, installers. Mm -hmm. I worked as a manufacturer's rep, kind of uh, supporting reps in the, uh, supporting manufacturers in the field. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've worked as an in installer. So I've done uh, uh, theaters all throughout the, the southeast of things, installing them, designing them. And now I work on the manufacturing side for KEF. And so one of the things I get to do in my job is so amazing is design theaters, design home cinemas and such. And so uh, got a lot of that under my belt over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. And so uh, when it came to designing mine, I was able to take all those kind of best practices I've learned from myself, mm -hmm. learned from other projects, got to work on a thing. So all of this was designed and built by me. Sweet. Uh, with a lot of help from my wife, a lot of help from the little kids too. Uh, my father and parents and stuff came over and things. There were some days where we'd, I'd work long hours mm -hmm. up until one or two o'clock in the morning trying to kind of get stuff moving, keep it moving. It did still take a year, uh, just because you're doing it all yourself takes a lot longer, but it was worth it. <laughs> it was worth it, trust me. I've sat, I've listened. It was definitely worth it. So let's go ahead, let's move into the theater so you guys can see exactly what he's done in here. Awesome, come on in. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, and say so this is this is uh, my home cinema. Uh, we're standing up here in the front row. Uh, it was designed uh, to be able to use uh, couches instead of theater chairs. I wanted to be able to fit as many people or as many kids, uh, mm -hmm. many as adults as we wanted into here. Mm -hmm. So we have two kind of chase lounge couches. Each mm -hmm. of them officially sit three people. And then across the back, we have a bar that sits three. So nine people officially, as many as 13 in here. Uh, or more when it comes to little kids and mm. watching cars on the screen. Yeah. So uh, the big screen you see behind me, uh, behind us, is a 11 and a half foot wide native 16.9 projection screen. Mm -hmm. It is acoustically transparent. 
So I actually have the left center and right speakers behind the screen, uh, along with two in-wall subwoofers behind the screen. Nice. Uh, all of that's enclosed kind of by a front baffle that's fabric covered and all acoustics are behind it as well to give us this really nice finished look where the screen is actually behind the wall. So when the screen is closed, uh, you basically can't tell there's a projection screen behind it. When you say screen closed, it's mask? Yep, so this has, this has top and bottom masking, so I'm able to do any of the aspect ratios that you may find in any films. Mm -hmm. So this is what's called a constant width screen. So the width mm -hmm. never changes, only the heights change top and bottom. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the rest of the speakers, so I have three of KEF's 5160 reference in walls in the front, so that makes up the LCR. Mm -hmm. Two of the 3160 RLB subwoofers behind the screen, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And then we have a pair of sides and a pair of rears. Mm -hmm. uh, the sides and rears are all of the KEF 3160 RL THX, that's our THX in wall, mm -hmm. three way loudspeaker. So I have a pair for the side, pair for the rears. Mm -hmm. And then I have one more pair of the 3160 RLB subwoofers in the back. Uh, for our rear subwoofers. Right. Now, one thing that I was able to do in this room that was kind of unique is I actually have a bit of a nook behind that wall. You would never mm -hmm. know it was there. Mm -hmm. And I have a little bit of an opening down over here where actually each of these openings, I have buried a Cube 12, which is a 12 inch, 300 watt sealed subwoofer. Okay. So yep. the system itself is actually a 7.6.4 which brings me to the dot four, which is the Atmos in ceilings. Mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of hard to see because they're, they're black, like the, uh, like the black fabric on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And those are our 200 RR THX. Those are an amazing speaker for Dolby Atmos. Mm -hmm. They have a huge motor structure in the back room, so they're capable of doing tons of output, tons of power handling. Mm -hmm. They have a one and a half inch tweeter in the KEF UniQ configuration with an eight inch woofer behind it. Okay. So one thing that's so unique about Dolby Atmos in here is all that power coming from the ceiling really does an amazing job of giving you height as well as depth in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, as you heard when we listened to some of the, some of the yeah. things earlier. So, so again, the configuration is a 7.2.4, oh, sorry, 7.6.4. Uh -huh. uh, all of it is, is in wall or appears to be in wall with the subwoofers being, being hidden those little nooks I had. Right, so if memory serves, this is basically the setup that they have in the music lounge. Similar, yeah. Because so we what got we, the Kef 12, they got the Cube 12s. Yep, so what we did differently is we have four Cube 12s in the front because we had the room for it. Yep. Uh, the same LCR. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have the in-wall subs in the front because we have four of the Cube 12s in the front. Right, right. Uh, we're running four 3160s for sides. Mm -hmm. Two 5160s, which are their bigger brothers, as rears. Okay. And then we have four pair of the 200 QSBs, which, sorry, I'm mentioning a bunch of model numbers. Those are an eight inch in wall subwoofer. We have four pairs of those in the sides. Mm -hmm. And then we're using two uh, or one pair of the 3160 subs in the rears. Mm -hmm. And then we just have one more additional pair of Atmos speakers. Okay. But now that space is a lot bigger, which warrants using all those extra speakers. Right. Uh, and here I actually wanted to keep as few speakers as possible just because by home cinema standards, this room is somewhat small, mm -hmm. uh, being only 12 and a half feet wide. Mm -hmm. I wish my screen could have been 15 feet wide, but I was limited by the room and you need to have some space for all the mechanicals and stuff like that on the left and right. <laughs> right, right. And I mean, you know, let's... You, like me, we, we have homes and they're, they're, yep. they're not mansions, right? <laughs> Definitely um, not. <laughs> but, you know, being able to have a space like this mm -hmm. is just awesome. Well, I mean, it's... I, honestly, I am, I am envious because I wish I had a basement where I could put a space it, like it this. Was, it was just pure luck of the draw. We found this house and, mm -hmm. and, and I loved it, of course, because I immediately saw a theater room yeah. in here. Uh, and like I say, it's got its small compromises being a little bit more narrow. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't see it now, but the, the door to our deck is actually out back. Our screen to porch is the back of the theater room, but I was able to kind of move around that adjust the speakers and things as need be. There's always some kind of a little compromise in the theater room, but that's that's what makes it fun. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, um, that, that's life. I mean, we have to live, we don't have to, but you know, we live with our families yep, and we, yep. want to, we want everybody to be happy, you know, our well, spouses. Well, and it's so. funny you'd bring that up because if you'll notice with the ceiling where we've got a, uh, this is a 16 by seven foot Starfield mm -hmm. that was custom made for this. Mm -hmm. um, the ceiling itself was actually a flat nine feet to begin with, mm -hmm. but I was able to tear down the center of the ceiling, mm -hmm. uh, raise the ceiling joist up another foot and a half. Above, directly above us is our living room. So in that gap between the theater room and the living room, I've got three separated layers of rock wool insulation, mm -hmm. along with sprayed in fiber insulation filling every gap. Mm -hmm. So we can play down here at pretty ridiculous volume levels and you just hear a little bit of a rumble upstairs, that's about it. So that's a great way for, if we're doing uh, you know, World War II movie night down here, the rest of the family will be, will be at peace upstairs. <laughs> right, right. So I have two questions. First mm -hmm. of all, 
Tell me a little bit more about the star field because this is really cool. Yep, so um, I'm actually a, an amateur astronomer as well, so I have mm -hmm. a big connection to the stars. Uh, mm -hmm. I tried to actually do this uh, accurate, but mm -hmm. the, I didn't get the number of stars I wanted, so I was able to kind of lay out a pattern that was truly random. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually broken down into six total panels. Mm -hmm. And each of those panels has its connections for the fiber optics that all actually run up into the fiber optic brain, which is hidden up in the ceiling. Okay. And that uh, allows me to control it. I can control it with the remote, so I can turn it on, turn it off, I can adjust mm -hmm. color and all that kind of stuff with it. Wow. Yeah, but it I works. pretty much just leave it on the, the twinkle stars. <laughs> yeah, it works because, I mean, you've got them. So there's, there's three dimensionals because mm -hmm. the, uh, the optics are at different levels. So. Yeah, so I've got, the, with the ceiling being recessed a foot, mm -hmm. that allows me to hide the projectors. So I'm actually, I've got, basically um, uh, boxes where the projectors be hidden so you don't hear them. It takes mm -hmm. care of all the cooling and things needed for the projectors. Mm -hmm. But then within that foot, I'm able to use all that depth for the stars. So instead mm -hmm. of the stars just being sliced flat, like the majority of star ceilings you'll find, mm -hmm. uh, I've got stars that are dangling all the way down, all the way past the past the uh, the softened ceiling, mm -hmm. and then some much shorter. So it has that really good depth to it when the lights are yeah. off. It really does. It really does. Yep. When I was watching movies, I, I would look up every now and yep. then to see the stars twinkling. It's, it's one nice. of my favorite features yeah. by far. <laughs> it's very nice. So that brings me to the second question, mm -hmm. which is uh, acoustic treatment. What yep. have you done for acoustic treatment? So uh, what was kind of unique in this room is I wanted to be able to keep the room as live as possible, mm -hmm. um, but I only had a quarter inch to play with. Uh, with the room being 12 and a half feet wide, I couldn't take much out of the sides mm -hmm. and still have rows along both sides. There were some things that I had that were kind of must-haves within the theater. I didn't want any seats along a wall mm -hmm. or a back wall. I want everybody to be removed from the boundaries for best for best audio. Mm -hmm. So I had to have three-foot walkways or, or, or close to three-foot walkways on each side, which means I couldn't do the typical, you know, two, two and a half or even four inches sometimes you might find for acoustics. Mm -hmm. So I had to do quarter inch for acoustics and I was able to get some different acoustic treatments that are hidden behind the fabric to help me uh, absorb uh, in the majority of places, but because uh, quarter inch acoustic treatment is so thin, all it can really do is help with those higher frequencies. Mm -hmm. But by coating the whole room, I've been able to dampen down those higher frequencies, yet still keep the mid frequencies and lower frequencies very alive. Mm -hmm. So the room feels very natural, yet it still has plenty of energy when you're watching something on screen. Nice, nice. and it does. It sounds really good in here. And I mean, one of the things that I noticed when I was listening um, to different tracks and different movies that we watch was just you hear the speakers, you don't really hear the room, mm -hmm. which is something that is actually kind of important <laughs> um, because and that's what you want in your home theater. You want to be able to hear just your speakers, not have your room echo and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that's really cool. Now, the other question I want to I have for you is you mentioned your projectors. What projectors are you on? So I've got an Epson 6050 mm -hmm. as my main projector. That's what's projecting on screen here. Mm -hmm. And that's a uh, incredibly high output for this size screen and a light controlled room projector. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Yeah, for ahead. the side projectors, I've got two Epson LS500 short throw projectors. Mm -hmm. Those are their newest laser 4K short throws. Mm -hmm. And they are amazing for what I've been able to use them for. Mm -hmm. He has side projectors. That means he has side screens. There's three screens in this room. So for all of you out there, you know, that are like, I like home theater and I like gaming, mm -hmm. you can game in this room with a surround experience. It is super cool, super awesome. He plays some Starfield Battlefield while I was here, or Star Wars Battlefield, excuse me, mm -hmm. while I was here. And it was just really cool just seeing it, just that whole wraparound experience. Mm -hmm. You can also watch TV and have yep. different games on mm -hmm. um, while you've got you know, your main source playing or you can pick your different sources. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is truly epic, everybody. <laughs> like, you know, everybody's like, oh, I want a home theater with the you know main screen he's got right but then he's also got the two screens here so th what size is this screen so this is an 11 and a half feet wide mm -hmm. uh, the two side screens are just under 10 feet wide just under 10 feet so they're a little bit smaller but i think that's because you have the ust units correct yep yeah uh, when everything kind of hit the road and, mm -hmm. and ultimately kind of came together in the room um, uh, I had to make some a little bit of changes and things with product availability and stuff. And so these screens, uh, and actually I said I said ten feet. They're actually just under eight feet wide. Okay. My apologies, I said wrong on that. Uh, which is why they're a little bit smaller, but smaller than the front screen. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it ended up working out just fine. And are these masks the same way? Uh, these are not masks. These are these will always stay at sixteen by nine, mm -hmm. uh, one point seven eight. Uh, mm -hmm. But they do have shades for when they're not used because uh, I wouldn't want. 
Uh, if you're watching a movie in here and you're not using the side screen, they wouldn't want the side screens to be reflective and be distractive. Because mm -hmm. uh, one thing I really believe in is that when you're watching something on screen, whether it be a movie or a concert or something, you should be able to envelop yourself completely into it. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll notice in the room I don't have a ton of extra lights. Mm -hmm. I like the room to be focused on the content you're watching. I, I, I believe that's the right thing to do for the artist, yeah. is to, to, to get all your attention on screen. Yeah, so this is this is truly an epic room, everybody. I, I have to be honest because the thing that I there's several things I like about this room, but one of the things I like that he mentioned is just the fact that this is this is a room or a space for family, right? Mm -hmm. So the seating is for family, but you still have access on both sides, so you can get in and out mm -hmm. as you need to. You can walk around. You don't have to walk. You don't have to worry about walking in front of somebody if you don't have to. Um, but yet, still, it sounds clean. It sounds good, and you've got three screens in here, three <laughs> projectors. You've got two USTs mm -hmm. in the main center here for watching movies, like I said, and gaming. So well, this is true. You think, so you think about hockey playoffs, uh, yeah. the NBA playoffs, NFL mm -hmm. play, any any sport playoff really yeah. at all, <laughs> or any any regular Sunday. You know, yeah. I can watch three football games easily. Yeah, and that's super cool. I mean, as a fan of sports myself, it's like <laughs> being able to not necessarily listen to the auto, but being able to keep track of games like NFL Sunday Ticket and you know the different playoff games and March Madness and all of that is just super cool. I mean, See, or, or as a nerd like me who watches rocket launches live, I can actually watch the official NASA feed and then watch the SpaceX feed as well as somebody else over here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we go. And you can do it all here. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like I said, this is truly an epic theater. Um, the Kef Music Lounge, the Kef Theater, uh, the theater at the Kef Music Lounge is awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a smaller version of that, mainly because it's a smaller room, mm -hmm. but he's got screens on both sides, and that does make a big difference in the overall experience. And like he says, you can mask um, the two sides, so you don't even really know that they're there. <laughs> You're just watching content on here. So this is this is this is this is truly special. <laughs> and and let me just reiterate here, he did this basically all himself. Mm -hmm during COVID. I mean, somebody, you know, somebody to come up with this um, during COVID. I mean, everybody had their projects and mm -hmm. I had my own. I did some sod or whatever in my backyard. Nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> but, but this, <laughs> this, you know, this coming together is truly special. Well, I say we, we were, we were definitely very lucky. You know, we, we were all able to stay really healthy, which was important. And mm -hmm. we were able to, uh, you know, the fact that I'm in this industry and was able to work with some of these other partners like Epson, like Hegel, mm -hmm. uh, like Acuris in the audio labs, like Snap One. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of said, hey, we want to do something that's really 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 cool really unique something that's never been done before mm -hmm. and uh, you know I explained the three screens and stuff to all those all those different companies and stuff so we were just really fortunate um, that I've done this before so I had the skill set mm -hmm. but then we also had the partnerships from all these other amazing manufacturers to kind of allow this to come to come together to kind of be a, a showpiece for what could be done in, in, in home cinema because the one thing that we at CAF really feel is important is that you should love your room love the experience love the content Mm -hmm. the way you like it. There's, there really is no absolute right and wrong when it comes to home theater or home cinema. If your home theater has three speakers, guess what? Your home theater has three speakers. Mm -hmm. That's what's right for your room. Mm -hmm. And we just want people to enjoy more movies, enjoy more, more music, mm -hmm. enjoy more video games with their friends, with their family, because if COVID taught us anything, friends and family and spending time with them it's is supremely cool. important. Yeah. And I mean, when we're able to get down here and watch a movie, when my wife and I are able to have a date night down here and watch a movie, <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just amazing. It completely takes us out of the house. It's like it's like we've gone to see a movie, but no sticky floors, no people with cell phones, no popcorn everywhere. You know, all the old, uh, all the advantages of, of, of still being at home. <laughs> right, right. And I mean, the fact that we can also now rent movies yep. um, while they're in the theater, mm -hmm. um, you can you can have a movie night really at home just even better than the theater like you said. Yeah, I mean it's been it's been amazing to see uh, you know both you know Disney Plus mm -hmm. uh, I think Apple TV as well as HBO Max, you mm -hmm. know for 15 or 20 dollars you can rent a movie streaming uh, that's just hard to hard to beat when you're it able is. to watch it at your home. You can pause it, come back and watch it, watch the rest the next night or so, or watch it again. It, it's really fantastic. Yeah, it really is. And this, and I haven't talked about this very much, but um, it looks fantastic in here with the Epson projector, and it sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, we sat here, we watched several different tracks: uh, Ready Player One. Uh, we watched the scene from The Matrix, uh, the shootout scene from oh, The yeah. Matrix. <laughs> um, and, and you, you got the surround effects, but you also have the overheads mm -hmm. um, really working in this room along with the bass that sounds really good so go well ahead. and I, I want to mention the bass too I, I think I have a lot of friends or family that hear six subwoofers and they're thinking that's just why would you need six <laughs> subwoofers yeah. 
But the reality is six subwoofers is not about getting higher and higher output. I mean, don't get me wrong, we can get ridiculous output, but having more subwoofers means that for the nine people that are in this room watching a movie or more, mm -hmm. all of them are gonna get the same consistent bass experience. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that's really tough in a home theater, home cinema, uh, even commercial cinema, is ensuring that bass is consistent for everybody in the room. Uh, that's why I don't like anybody sitting, sitting along a wall or sitting along a boundary where that bass gets louder for that person, whereas it's quieter for somebody in the middle. Mm -hmm. So six subwoofers is all about just getting more consistent bass across the room. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that this room does very, very well that I'm incredibly proud of because you can get that good shake during a rocket launch or mm -hmm. that, that, that uh, impact in your chest at a, uh, at a gunshot or explosion, mm -hmm. um, but it's not uh, you know, ripping someone's teeth out and then someone's getting nothing. Right, right, right. That's, and that's truly the benefit of multiple subwoofers. Mm -hmm. I think I even did a video on that. That's the main benefit. It, yes, you can get the output, but you can mm -hmm. always turn the subwoofers down just a yep. little bit if mm -hmm. it's too much output, just so you have a better seat-to-seat -seat balance of your base. And if you have a processor that can independently yep. um, modulate the levels and everything for the subwoofer, mm -hmm. so for the subwoofer channels, that's even better. Um, yeah, every single one of my channels is fully independent, so I can control each of them, right. which allows me to really fine tune bass, and it, it makes it makes for an amazing difference. I yeah. mean that. That final step in building a theater or designing a theater, which is calibration, listening to the tracks you know mm -hmm. over and over again, making small little <laughs> yeah. tweaks here and there, is still one of the most important things you can do it to is. kind of get that equipment to come, come alive, come out of the box. Um, and I don't want to even admit to how many hours I sent it here just listening to certain tracks, mm -hmm. you know, adjusting the six subwoofers kind of one at a time to get them the way I want it to. And, and I'm glad you brought that up because that's, that's super important, everybody. I mean, we've built the, he's built the room and it's awesome, right? But this is really for consuming content. Mm -hmm. At the end of the Correct. day, yep. all the tech is great, right? The subwoofers, the speakers, everything's great, but you want to be able to consume content and enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? And I had an enjoyable experience here today. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Oh, Do you I'm have so glad else? you came by. No, I just thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. This has been a uh, a huge labor of love for my yes. family and I over the last uh, last two years now, actually, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I'm just really thrilled to show it off uh, yeah. because we kind of had the you know the little secret of this room kind of hidden for a little while. We didn't mm -hmm. want to really show it off until everything was all finished. But uh, uh, it's real, everybody. And if, I'm yeah. here. It's real. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> it is real. Huh? This is super awesome. And hopefully, we'll show more in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's super awesome. So. If you enjoy this type of content, definitely give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. If you'd like your theater showing off, uh, hit me an email, shoot me an email. Um, I will try to get to you, you know, whenever I'm in your area. But again, Adam, thank you so much for allowing me to see this theater that honestly, most people aren't doing this. Let's just be real. Most people don't have, you know, the big screen and the two side screens, but uh, this is super cool. Thank you so much. Thank you for and, coming, Cody. Um, appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thanks, and everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Kef, because they helped put me in touch with Adam. So thank you so much as well. But that's all I have. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you next time.